I'm going to walk everybody through the application for the California Mortgage Relief Program. The intent of this demonstration is to provide insight into the application, some key eligibility criteria, as well as some helpful hints. So with that, let's get started. The first thing to note is that this program is for homeowners in California who have fallen behind on their housing payments. Many other states have established or are working on setting up a similar program. So if your home is outside of California, it's worth researching or reaching out to a certified HUD housing counselor to understand your options. The easiest way to access the application is to search for California Mortgage Relief Program via an internet browser. This will bring you to our program website and in the upper right hand corner, you will see a button that says apply now. This will bring you to a page that provides some background information on the program and allow you to get started. The first page of the application aims to collect a few key pieces of information, which will allow you to determine if you meet program eligibility criteria. So for example, if you indicated you did not miss two or more payments prior to the program launch of December 27, 2021, or you identify a zip code outside of the state of California, you'll get a message that says you are not eligible for this program. The message will also indicate any other eligibility criteria that did not meet the program guidelines. If you believe you provided incorrect information, you can go back and correct it. So at this point, I'm going to fill out the application, indicating I experienced a COVID-19 related financial hardship, that I missed the mortgage payments prior to the program launch date, I only own one residential property, it's my primary residence, but I'm not going to indicate that a business is listed as the homeowner. I'm going to make sure to include a zip code, which is inside California, and choose the type of home. Upon clicking see my results, you can see that I got a message indicating I may be eligible and a button allowing me to start my application. Upon clicking start my application, you'll be asked to sign in to your mortgage relief profile. If you do not have a profile, you'll click the link that says no account, register. For the sake of time, I won't go through the process. It's pretty standard. Create a username, a password, and associate it with an email address. If you have any trouble with that process, you can reach out to the California Market Relief Contact Center and they can assist. I'm gonna sign in with my username and password that I've already created. At this point, I'm gonna review the security and privacy notice and accept the terms. I've now landed on the California Mortgage Relief homepage, the applicant portal. You can see I'm logged in by my name in the upper right hand corner. You can also see the various language options along the top and in the middle, there's a button to start a new application. Up in the right hand corner, you can see a mail icon next to my profile name. This is where I will be able to receive and send messages. At this point, I do not have any messages. So I'm going to return home and start my application. You can see the mortgage relief hotline number is here. If at any point in the application you have questions, feel free to call that number. I'm now going to fill out the homeowner information. You can see it my information provided previously has been copied over and I'm going to fill out any additional information requested. Fields marked with a red asterisk are required and I'll be required to fill those in. Red validation messages appear to help the applicant understand specific requirements for each field. When I enter my home address, it's important to note that this should match the address on your mortgage statement as the applicant should be the resident of the home and it should be the primary residence. And again, the, the residence should be within the state of California. 
indicate the property type, and identify how many total people reside in the household, including children or expected children. Questions 1.5 through 1.10 have been copied over from what I initially included on the application prior to logging in. And I'll continue to fill out questions 111 through 114. In 112 and 113, you provide the initial loan amount of the mortgage as well as the amount requested to bring the loan current. So how much is it um, withstanding? In 114, you identify if there's any other adults in the household and how many. Depending on how many adults you identify, the next section will build out as many as that. So I indicated one, and I'm going to provide the information for that additional adult who is Monica Bing. I'm gonna include her date of birth, her phone number and her email address, as well as her social security number and indicate if she is also listed on the mortgage statement. It's important that this address is a valid email address because we are going to have to reach out to Monica um, and later in the application. At this point, I'm going to save and continue on to the next part of the application. At any point in time, you can save and exit, and your application will be saved in a draft form. It will not be submitted and you can come back to the application and continue. You can see over on the left-hand side, I can see uh, how far I've come in the application and how far I have left to go. At this point, I'm going to provide the income information for the household. I'm not gonna get into too much of the specifics of eligibility. However, there is some criteria applicants must meet with respect to income and assets. So here it's important to total all the relevant income sources, as well as provide documentation to support it. The more comprehensive applicants can be at this stage of the application, the more smoothly and efficiently the application review process will go. So per individual, I'm gonna identify the gross amount of income and the frequency of that income, as well as provide documentation to support it. So in this case, I'm going to upload wages from employment, and you can see when I select the wages from employment from the dropdown, a little area to upload files appears, as well as some information on what we're looking for specifically from the documentation perspective to support that type of income. So I'm gonna click this off screen. I am uploading the files and soon you'll see them uploaded to the application. Okay, you can see I've uploaded my pay statements for December 2021 as well as January 2022. So in this case, this is the most recent pay stubs that I have, and those are going to help the eligibility workers um, establish your income. If I had another source of income, I would add that as well here, but in this case, I don't. So my other household member, Monica, is actually unemployed. She lost her job due to COVID, so I'm going to indicate that by indicating she has zero income at the time of application. Her proof of income, I'm just gonna put no income. The income frequency is not applicable. And I'm gonna review and certify all of these statements under penalty of perjury. Again, very important to read this and think through if there are any other income sources that Monica may have, like a side job, or you know, other uh, benefits from social security, for example, that might need to be included. Now we're gonna ask for the hardship statement. So essentially, we're looking to understand you know, what hardships uh, did you experience as a result of COVID-19? And in this case, I'm saying uh, we lost our employment, we have childcare responsibilities, and we have illness. The next section is the assistance, where we're gonna be looking for the information with respect to your mortgage. So we are going to upload our most recent mortgage statement. Again, for all this documentation, please provide all the pages you have. If you have a PDF uh, downloaded, that works better. We've seen some 
Uh, applicants upload pictures of their mortgage statements, which uh, makes it challenging to read. Additionally, we're going to upload our escrow statement. Uh, we'd like to know if you've communicated with your loan servicer about you know, mitigation options. And at this point, we are going to ask for your mortgage servicer. We have a drop down with um, a good number of the mortgage servicers that serve this in the state of California. However, if you don't see your mortgage servicer on this list, you can call this number and we'll work to get them added to the list for you. So we do a data exchange with the mortgage servicers and what we need to know is the correct name of your mortgage servicer, so we know who to send the data to, as well as the mortgage loan number because that's the information that they're going to be looking for um, when they're looking up your account. So make sure both of those are accurate. We're gonna ask about the status of your account, um, the amount um, your normal monthly mortgage payment is, and any other payments that you may uh, have. And then lastly, for each of those payments, how much do you pay? I'm going to save and continue on. And that brings us to section five, documentation. So here we're gonna ask for you to upload some documentation to support our eligibility determination. First is your utility bill, which we will use to verify your residence. Next, we're looking for bank statements. So again, please upload all pages of two of your most recent bank statements. And this goes for any personal bank statements, um, not necessarily including any retirement funds, but your personal checking, savings, mutual funds, etc. If you have an active bankruptcy, you'll need a trustee approval document indicating that you are allowed to move forward with this process. And if you have a service or denial letter indicating that you were denied for a workout option, that would you would upload as well. Okay, I am saving and continuing on. Section six is the authorization for the MRP program, servicers, and others as needed to share and discuss the information provided in this application and information needed to determine eligibility. It's important to re review this language before you check the box to provide that authorization. Additionally, we have a proof of employment template. If you had challenges obtaining your income information or pay stubs, this template could be provided to your employment employer to complete. The employer would provide the information on the template with respect to your wages, as well as provide contact information, and that way we could reach out to them if the reviewer deter determines they need more information. Saving and continuing. Section seven captures the ethnicity, race, and gender information. Uh, this is requested by the federal government to monitor the program's compliance with fair housing and civil rights laws. You may choose the answers that fit best, or you can decline to answer. So I am going to just fill this out based on what information seems to be most appropriate and where I feel like it, I'll decline to answer. Section eight asks how you, the applicant heard about this program. So you cho may choose all that applies. And section nine are the attestations. Now it's important again to read through these and understand each as you check them off, acknowledging them. And certifications, same thing. Make sure you read and understand it prior to checking it off and moving forward. Okay, at the bottom of this, we're gonna request an electronic signature I'm going to note that you have to include your name as it's listed in section 1.1 of the application. You can see here I added an L, and so it's reminding me that that's not the information I provided up front. So I'm going to remove that, and it will allow me to move forward. At this point, we're going to ask the other adults in the household to provide their lock electronic signature as well as review those same attestations. So. Uh, upon completing this, getting to the section, I am now moving into Monica, my co-applicant's inbox, and you'll see she got an email indicating that she needs to log sign into the application and perform some steps prior to submittal.
we're going to ask them for verification information. So the last four digits of the SSN that Chandler provided on her behalf, as well as her date of birth and her phone number. And once I'm verified, I'm going to be brought to the application and I can review all the information that Chandler provided for our household, as well as my information. I can review my income and his income that he provided, the answers that he included in these sections. And it's an, a good idea for the the co-applicant to review this information just to validate that everything looks correct. I can see his attestation and his signatures and now I'm going to be asked to perform that same review of the attestations and certifications as well as provide my own signature. Again, I need to sign my name as it's listed in the application. Here I included my maiden name. It's not correct. I should have used my married name because that's what Chandler provided on my behalf. And I get a confirmation, confirmation message indicating that I have completed my aspect of it. I'm back in Chandler's inbox and you can see he got a message indicating that I've completed my piece of the application. and I can log into the intake portal. Okay. I'm going to log back in. Let's select and continue. I can see that Monica Bing, her status on her signature has, signed, has been changed to sign, and it's going to allow me to submit the application. Prior to doing so, it's going to ask me to double check I'm, I'm confirming I'm going to submit it. It's saving. And I now have a confirmation message with my application number, the primary applicant, and the submission date. So that pretty much covers the application process. Um, real quickly, I'm going to touch on what happens next. So the Mortgage Relief Program reviewers will review uh, your mortgage servicer. If your mortgage servicer is not a participating servicer, your application will go on hold and it will remain on hold until your servicer decides to participate in the program. Upon participating in the program, or if your servicer was already participating in the program, you'll get a message indicating that your application has been signed to a reviewer and they'll be reviewing your case shortly. Next, the reviewers will review the application for completeness. So in some cases, additional information may be requested to better understand your household makeup, income, or assets situation. In this case, you'll get a message in the upper right hand corner, I showed you that mail icon, that'll indicate a message has been sent from the reviewer and identify what additional information would they would like to be supplied. You can upload that documentation via the application and resubmit. You can also message back to the reviewer via that same area of the portal. Again, in general, the more thorough you can be up front with the application, um, in the documentation you provide, the less likely that process will be needed. As the application is reviewed towards the later steps of the eligibility process, there's a data exchange with the servicer. So this allows the program to validate the information provided, but also to get the most up-to-date information on the amount due to cover up your outstanding payments. That way, if another payment was due, say in the time it takes for you to submit your application, or for that application to be reviewed, the program has your total amount due, not just what was provided in the application and what was stated on your mortgage statement. If the application is approved, you'll be notified via a message and the funds will be sent directly to your mortgage servicer. Alternatively, if your application is denied, you'll be also notified and you can apply again if your circumstances change. 
Hopefully this has been helpful. Again, if you have any questions about the application process or have technology challenges with the application, we encourage you to reach out to the Mortgage Relief Program Contact Center. If you have questions about your specific situation or your options, we encourage you to connect with a HUD certified housing counselor or your servicer who can inform you of your options, including, but not limited to, this specific program. Thank you.